Hey, Courtney. So happy to have you on the Education Next podcast. Sorry for all the trouble that we had while connecting. And uh, I'm so glad that you joined in early morning. <laughs> yes. Thank so, you so much for having me. Hi, everyone. <laughs> I keep reading your uh, Twitter post and uh, I love that you write about, you know, homeschooling and alternate learning. And I would um, invite you to talk more about your journey and how did you know, how you came to it and what's your plan with homeschooling for the, yeah, welcome to the show. Thank you. Yes, um, so I kind of have an eclectic background. I studied physics and when, as a part-time job, I taught at the university, I taught some labs and I've just always loved watching people sort of put things together in their brains without me telling them, like watching them have an experience where they learn. And so I was actually a public high school teacher in Tucson, Arizona. I taught high school physics for a few years and I sort of went in very bright eyed and bushy tailed and I was going to change the system and I was going to bring all these new things. And, and I did. And there are so many wonderful teachers out there like that. Um, the problem is, and the problem that I experienced was that by the time I was working with those teenagers, mostly 15 to 18 year olds. Um, they had been so ingrained in a system and one way of doing things that by me saying, hey, let's do more experiential learning. Let's learn about how we know what we know. Let's go beyond lecture. You know, let's like really try to put ourselves out there and test our limits. Mm -hmm. And so many of them were just like, okay, but what's my grade? Um, and how exactly is me doing this going to affect my grade? Mm -hmm. I became sort of disillusioned. And I jokingly <laughs> called my students point mongers, because they just wanted their points. And they were not in the system of reward and punishment had interfered with their ability to engage with their own learning and to take initiative to have agency and there were some students that were, you know, quite excited, but most of them sort of behaved almost like prison inmates, you know, like, okay, I have to be here. I didn't, they didn't get choose to be here. They didn't choose to be in my class and they're just waiting to be given their orders. Correct. And I was, it was so disheartening that I knew that I couldn't work in that system anymore mm -hmm. and that if, and when I had children, I would have to homeschool them or find um, some other alternative. Mm -hmm. And so then I went to work for an education nonprofit in technology, had children. And now my oldest is five and wow. it's been amazing to me because I, um, my degree was more with secondary education. So I didn't really have experience with the young kids. Mm -hmm. And I am just amazed at how children are wired to learn. Mm -hmm. Like they just learn and they, they're not even choosing to learn their brains are and their bodies are learning through experiences, through mm -hmm. imitating their adults, through interacting with their environment. Mm -hmm. And it's been so amazing to me at how much um, both of my children have learned without me really having to try or, you know, do flashcards or mm -hmm. anything like that. And so um, that's kind of how I've got to homeschooling. And what's next for us? We're we're mostly doing sort of like a very loose unschooling with some, um, we are following a phonics program. And I feel like that's a really good path forward for these early years. Mm -hmm. And then I am curious about more structured education later on once we've like, sort of had mm -hmm. this foundation of play. Mm -hmm. And, um, but I'm also just very open to new experiences. So We've joined um, an enrichment homeschool co-op. It's totally free and parent run. Mm. And what's amazing is half of the parents are actually former teachers. Mm. And we all just take turns um, teaching the kids. It's all 100% outdoors. Mm. And um, we're mostly teaching them things about like, here are the plants that grow here. Here's, you know, we're going to do some stargazing. We're going to do moon phases. We're going to look at what's happening right mm -hmm. here right now so it's and it's also for that uh, mixed age play social benefit mm -hmm. so it's just been really amazing and um I think I'm just really enjoying it you mm -hmm. know there one thing that I really don't want to happen one thing that I'm really trying to avoid 
I keep my kids at home is, um, you know, young kids, when they first go to school, they're always so excited. They're like, oh, I get a backpack and I'm going to be big and go to school. And then usually by about halfway through the school year or second grade, they're like, I only want to go to school because of my friends. I don't like learning, you know, because it hasn't been in a developmentally appropriate timeline. So true. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. Yeah, most of us can relate with that too. I mean, if you ask me what I remember about school, I can tell you why I just remember, you know, spending time with my friends. And if anything, I would like to go back in that time would be because, yeah. you know, the kind of friends I had and nothing more related to uh, learning or education at all. Um, <laughs> because, uh, I mean, I somehow it never came to my mind that I was learning it was for a higher purpose or I'm going to get anything out of it. And I think this is a truth of many students who come out of school is they don't know where they are, what are they doing, what did, what were they learning. <clears throat> we were spending seven to eight hours sitting in the school, you know, blocks of uh, periods for science or maths or physics, but nothing could make us fall in love with any of those subjects, right? And uh, I think... Also, the idea of doing the same thing that has been always done, <clears throat> studying with the same books, and um, and it really, it's scary. I have also worked in school just because I wanted to explore education for my son. And I realized that it's all, everything is same. It's so boring. And uh, when I see my son and he's he loves to do what he loves to do, he wants to explore, he wants to... Uh, find out about who are these people what are they doing in technology and I mean I would have never thought that he could sit in a school now if you ask me <laughs> what would he do there sitting you know one uh, period after the other and what would he be doing uh, like that um, so um, with you said that you have these communities there so are these like physical communities you go you take your children how does this work yes yeah. And so I, I also want to come, I'll answer that, but I also want to comment on what you said about your son and what I've been learning about children's brain development is when they are interested in something and they're asking you a question and they are involved in their learning, that's when the very best neural pathways are formed. And so by you following his interests, he's actually learning it better than if you had just signed him up for a class on the exact same topic because you're meeting him right where he's at, right when he's ready for that information. Yes, yeah, so um, the community I'm in, it is um, it is in person. So I live in Idaho in the United States and it's very homeschooling friendly. And there are so many different communities to pick from here. There are even um, micro schools, which are like drop-off programs where if maybe I have to work, I can drop off my kid at this alternative school they're there for you know two to four hours and the parents have a lot of say in what's actually taught and it's um there's a lot of mixed age groups so there are those options there are options where um some families have even hired like a retired teacher and a few families get together and their kids work and there are some groups that are just purely for the socialization and play with the young children um my group is specifically for age seven and under. So it's very play-based. We do um, like a story, we do um, a little bit of a parent-led activity, and then we have the kids try things out and explore and play. And I think a lot of people, most people who have been through the public school system may look at that and say, well, how do you know that they're learning? They don't, are they going to pass this test? Like they didn't do a worksheet. They don't have anything to show for it. But what we're learning about how children learn, and a lot of this is coming out of the AI research, people are trying to train AI to learn the way a child learns. And so now we're learning so much more about how children learn. And now we know that what children really need in the early years is they need to have a lot of experiences, a lot of sensory experiences, because we're laying a foundation on which higher order learning later on can be hung. It's like, it, they're called schemas. And so it's almost like a bunch of hooks on a, on a wall. And the more hooks you have, the more new learning can go on them later, but you can't skip the process of them playing, learning and exploring just through their own natural inclinations. 
Very true. And I think, uh, I don't know, this is, uh, that's going on everywhere now on the internet. If you see, it's, you go to any social media and you see that there is a surge of people who want to take education and learning in their hands. You know, they are traveling, they are seeking for tutors. Uh, people are have become very, very active now uh, than any other time, I guess. Um, it's all um, coming off the you know mainstream. People are, want to explore about how education is working. Um, it generally starts with uh, you know younger people, younger people doing more of homeschooling, and then uh, do you know more uh, of families where older kids are also homeschooling, and what is your uh, uh, you know observation uh, like? What are they doing? Can you share something about that? Yes. So um, my husband actually recently met some people. Um, he's involved in the local uh, Bitcoin group. And there's a, a man there with his sons and they all homeschooled. I think the oldest was about 16, but he said he finished all of his normal standard work by about 15. And now he's already has his bachelor's and um, he's been getting involved with his uh, his family business. So He's learning at, you know, 16, 17, 18, how a business works. How do you scale a business? Like very real world problems. And I think that is one of the biggest reasons that I hear people want to homeschool, but it's because they want their kids to grow up in the real world, not in this very artificial, sterile environment Absolutely. where everything is controlled for. Mm -hmm. um, so for example, I've been wanting to get into entrepreneurship personally, mm -hmm. and it's been a very big challenge for me. Because my entire life, I've been very good at following every other person's instructions. Mm -hmm. There was a roadmap laid out. And if I did all the right steps, I would achieve success. And we know that that is not working. And really, the thing is, the future is going to be so different for our kids. We yes. don't know. I mean, AI is not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. We don't know what it's going to look like. It could be amazing. It could be horrible. But either way, public schools and the traditional system is not really preparing kids. Mm -hmm. And so what we've got to do is raise kids who are flexible, who are mm -hmm. resilient, and mm -hmm. who can respond to the challenge in front of them and have that high agency. Absolutely. I mean, I think I can relate to everything or every word you are saying right now, because, um, <laughs> you know, I had similar challenges, you know, when I wanted to start something of my own I, I had those same sort of blockages you know because I'm used to do this set of things or that set of things and submit this kind of a thing but now that you have to work for yourself uh, uh, it becomes exciting over a period of time but there are so many structures to be followed because entrepreneurship is not just like you know it's very exciting everything goes well there are so many so many times <laughs> it just you feel like, what, what am I doing? Why am I doing? And those questions and everything is part of this journey, I'm sure. Um, so a couple of things that uh, I see there's a pattern of, you know, more of uh, people who have worked in some way or the other in education, are they uh, homeschool? Is it true? Do you think that more people who are into, were teachers or were in school system or education system, they become homeschoolers do you think there's a pattern there i i jokingly call it the uh teacher to homeschool mom or homeschool dad <laughs> pipeline <laughs> because i really i really see it and so many of them say that because of their experiences um mm. in the classroom they know that that was not what they wanted for their kids mm. and some of this has to do with education some of it has to do with culture and values mm. and i think a lot of it has to do with freedom and agency and the fact that now with the internet, we have we can decentralize education. It doesn't all have to come from one place. Absolutely. Now with the creator economy, you can buy a course for $500 from an expert and mm -hmm. learn, okay, is that what I actually want to do? Mm -hmm. Instead of spending four years at college, mm -hmm. spending hundreds of thousands maybe. Um, so I just think it's a totally different world. But to answer your question, yes, I absolutely see that a lot of teachers see the writing on the wall. <laughs> and I'm not sure what the state of education is in India, but in the US, I mean, we just keep pumping money into this bloated system. And we see that less than 40% of graduates can actually read at grade level. Mm. And they're being graduated. I mean, and like, 
we're in the 30% in terms of who is actually proficient just at, you know, the minimum of what the state has said. So it's, um, it's not a good system. <laughs> I mean, what can I say about our system? Yeah. It's like we have a huge, huge population. And uh, I think getting education to everyone itself is a big challenge. So if yeah. you can think of uh, me leaving the education system, people will uh, call me crazy because, you know, when accessibility to education itself is a question mark, why would you leave the education system? But the thing is, uh, there is, uh, you know, people have started, especially in cities, people have started understanding, you know, because now I think, I think it was, it had to happen when you get lot, you know, when you get your basic needs met, I think mm -hmm. you start asking the bigger questions, I think, right? Like, um, am I going to do the same thing? Yeah, am I happy? Is my child happy? And uh, uh, what are we chasing? What will, and I think I started asking these questions. Am I going to wait for 12 years? Every year, there'll be a 20% rise in the fee, school fee, if he goes to an international school. And I calculated and I was like, what kind of money will I have to earn by the time he's in grade 12? And what kind of money will I have to you know, save till he goes to a college? And it only scared me. And uh, I realized that um, you know, pulling him out of the bed and sending him to school was not purposeful anymore. And that all happened all because of COVID, I guess, because we realized mm -hmm. uh, when we started learning, I think most of the parents I meet, they tell me that it was all, it happened because of COVID when they were at home and they were spending time and they realized they could work and they could you know, be with kids. So um, in India, there are people who are trying different things. There are micro schools coming up and which is, uh, so to get to people and tell them that this is possible itself is a challenge because uh, it's very difficult to understand that, uh, you know, we can exist without the mainstream model. Like you said, there are, you know, it's, there's a, a creator economy is there now, you know, you can create, even young people can create whatever they are good at and they can sell it and they can make networks around it. And these are the things that we will need more and more and more, Right. So uh, uh, when you, uh, like you said, where you stay, um, where you live, you said that there are communities and I think it's good when you have communities around you because now it's easier, right? It's easier because it's common uh, that it's happening. Also, uh, have you uh, come across that Washington Post where there was a surge, they reported a surge in homeschooling, uh, which is like more than ever reported. And do you think it is going to grow now more in number because more people will understand and uh, they will want to spend time and it, it, is it because also there is a people can't remote work now more people are going and doing entrepreneurship do you think it's all because of that as well i think it's a lot of things i think it's first of all parents um, like you're saying they're being in tune with their kids to say if my kid doesn't want to go to school and if these schools aren't even producing producing the results they're supposed to produce, like, what are we doing? Mm. And we're also seeing how a lot of parents are saying, I don't know if college is really going to be the answer for my mm. kid because of how quickly the world is changing and how the institutions are not keeping up. Mm. And um, I do, I do see absolutely the rise in homeschooling. I think it used to be um, 20 years ago, it was about one in 200 and now in, in the U.S., and now it's about one in 20, mm -hmm. which is about 5%. And that's, you know, slightly older data. So this Washington Post article may actually be um, saying even higher. But I think when people start to realize that homeschooling is not school at home, you, you don't have to sit there and, you know, educate your kids for mm -hmm. six, seven hours a day mm -hmm. when they see, oh, my kids are actually always learning, just like I taught them when they were kids, mm. just like I help them reinforce good habits. And that is teaching mm. just like when I read stories to them and that's learning, or I bring them alongside me in what I'm doing, because then they're learning real world skills. Um, I think when we can sort of break out of that mindset of schooling looks like what the public schools or the traditional schools do, then we've just opened the whole can of worms and people can pick what works for them. And so, for example, I have a friend who used to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. She has a son who is sort of twice different. So he has a learning disability. He has dyslexia, 
but he also um, is incredibly gifted. And so he was not being, he's sort of a unique case. And so he was not being really supported in the schools. They wanted to keep mm. him in special education and he wasn't able to get the challenge and get the support that he needed to really grow. Mm. And so she's brought him home and she can't believe, you know, she's spending two hours a day with him because he's, you know, about fourth grade mm. and he is absolutely thriving. And mm. so I think when we realize that what works for one child may not work for another. Some children are sunflowers. Some children are orchids. You know, everyone is different. We need sort of slightly different things. And who better to know that than the parents, really? And right. so I think once we can break open that mindset and then support parents and say, you know, there's more resources than ever. Mm -hmm. If you have a library card and the internet, then, you know, that's an incredible amount of resources. I am to, I'm totally going to agree with what you're saying because, you know, who better than parents to know, you know, what your kid is. And I think it's tough when you have to go to uh, schools and hear about your kids having some kind of a problem and then they tell you and then you have a completely different. I mean, I have worked in schools and I remember telling something to what I have been observing about a kid and then parent telling something very different than what we have because children behave different in different settings, right? And um, some of them were struggling and parents were really um, working hard to fit the kid in the system. And that is the challenge for most of the parents that I know, that um, they want their kid to fit in that space. Um, they might be bullied, they might not be happy, they might be struggling with academics and we, um, I don't know about, I can't tell about every school in the world, but most of the school that you know, I have worked in or I have gone to uh, academics is the main thing, right? Um, you know, you will have to be good in certain subjects and um, that's your identity, right? With your uh, being good with uh, in different subjects. And But what if you're good in something really different, which is not served in the school, then what? You will never know that about yourself. And by the time, you know, you will have bills to pay. So you will never go and you know, be able to explore. I think everything is tough, right? I mean, taking this decision and the fear from parents mostly is, I do not have time. What will I do? How will I take care of so many things? And like you said, um, you know, it's not just homeschooling doesn't mean bringing the school to the home. And that's what basically started earlier. There were many parents still practice this, you know, bringing the entire curriculum at home and trying to do it by themselves. And then it becomes very taxing, they're unable to do that because it's difficult. But uh, it's more than that, you know, it's more than I think, uh, you know, finding what your child is interested in, getting tutors, getting so many services that are available out there. So um, do you, so what is, uh, are you starting any business or how are you starting, you know, what are you uh, taking this uh, homeschooling journey to? Are you going to help parents? What is your plan? Right. So um, right now I'm definitely still learning. I've created this free, um, it's like a 10 page ebook and it's mm -hmm. all about how children learn through play. Mm -hmm. So if anybody has kids between ages about three and seven, it's for them for free. And um, I'm planning on coming out with a course in the, in the spring and it will be about how children learn through play and their environment mm -hmm. and how you can do like a, like a kindergarten year at home without curriculum or without feeling like it's too much. Um, what are some really practical things that you can do in your everyday life mm -hmm. to help your kids learn to read and sort of do all the basics. Mm -hmm. So that that's one way that I'm going. And I also feel pulled in another direction, mm -hmm. which is talking, speaking more to the development of the entire child beyond just academics. Mm -hmm. um, how, what is the emotional climate of the home? Because mm -hmm. I've been learning about the human nervous system and how we as parents imprint on our kids. Mm -hmm. So if we are in constant overwhelm, constant stress, our children automatically pick up on that. So what are things that we can do? Mm -hmm. um, because I've sort of gone through a personal journey on that a few years ago and mm -hmm. um, how do we set our kids up for success in terms of being resilient in the long run because all the academics in the world 
mm-hmm. won't matter if you can't, you know, manage your emotions as an adult. I think that's that's interesting. I think many takers would be there because I think generally we are not aware of how we feel and uh, how our uh, you know our feelings and everything percolates and affects our kids. We are not aware, and I think that self awareness not only has to be with us and it it's a great skill for kids as well to be self-aware so that they don't get influenced easily so that they don't pick up on trends that they don't relate to I think I work on I try to work on that I try to help my son Adi you know understand if uh, how to be self-aware and uh, how to reflect what are you feeling why are we comparing and those kind of things we always have these discussions with each other and um, I'm so happy that you are you know good uh, talk to you and get your um, you know opinion on homeschooling and what it will look like or what it is now uh thank you so much for being here would you like to leave us with something some words or something that would motivate more parents to think about it and uh, explore yes um i'll just say that everyone that i've talked to that has made the jump made that leap of faith to homeschool none of them have regretted it And all Mm -hmm. of them have said how they loved getting the more time with their kids. So I think that if you can really look at your, your lifestyle and your support system and try to get creative Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, I wish you all the best of luck and thank you very much Priyanka for having me on. It was great talking to you. Thank you so much, Courtney. Thank you so much for being here and hope we can talk more, connect more and keep sharing with each other, whatever we know. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Bye.